Hello and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program episode. And first off, I just want to apologize for my voice or if I make any uh, disgusting noises because I'm a bit sick but I'm on the recovering side. So I wanted to do the movie which I've been recording when I've been feeling up to it while I've been sick the last couple of days. So we are finishing off the refueling station and we get some pretty good uh, launch views here. So I wanted to include them in the start of this uh, episode and we're also going to test a new design on our reef or our fuel truck so we'll see how that goes now um, I've been thinking of how am I going to do this for the Duna mission and how do I want to structure it and I could do it uh, many different ways but um, what I do want to do is kind of uh, instead of me spending a lot of lot of time uh, testing and getting rockets to work uh, pretty good or perfect or whatever my criteria is for the mission uh, and then shoot the video and uh, show you guys I think we're going to do uh, or I'm going to show you the R&D part of the next mission because that's going to be a lot of uh, what the next episode is about. We are taking the Kerbals to Duna, we're building a base or a colony on Duna. And doing that there is a lot of research and development that has to be done by me and the Kerbals. Uh, I've gone to Duna, I've done missions to Duna, but this is going to be on a different scale. We're going to have Keithane, we're going to have a, uh, a base orbiting the Duna for uh, our Kerbals, we're gonna have a base on Duna where the Kerbals can live, we have to have a return vessel uh, and everything has to work perfectly and I also want to have, um, mimic artificial gravity if we can do that uh, on our trip to Duna because that would be cool. Uh, just saying what's going on, we just finished the station and you see uh, the engines going in for our re-entry and I just thought I would show you both of them because it's a pretty nice view um, seeing them one in daylight and one in night uh, they didn't burn up in the atmosphere as I expected so I guess they didn't have enough velocity to get too hot and the engine was the leading part so it takes a lot of temperature but anyway uh, going to do everything should well have to work on the first attempt because there's like two years so waiting for the phase angles to work going to Duna and we don't want to time warp all the time so in the meantime between each uh, launch to Duna there's going to be a lot of R&D work uh, so what it doesn't need too much R&D is our, um, our rover which we're going to send in the next phase angle but we also want to start to build our orbiting station uh, and I want to send that in one go so we have to uh, build the first parts of a station, assemble it in orbit, connect the rover to this and send this to Duna and be able to land the rover and find a good spot for our colony. Uh, so yeah, what's going on now? We're going to the moon with the fuel truck, uh, which it's, it's an attempt. Uh, in the next episode we're going to fly back and see how much fuel uh, do we have left. I use the skipper engine because I wanted to have a lot of thrust but seeing how much fuel it takes to get back and forth with all this fuel we might have to redesign it but this is what I want to do in the coming episodes we I want the R&D stuff to be more in the episodes and you guys seeing me trying and failing so there's going to probably be a lot more exploding rockets which is great because it's fun to watch uh, in the upcoming episodes so we're not going to Duna, the, like I just build everything and we just go to Duna, but we're going to research and develop this and you guys give me feedback and pro maybe some new ideas. But saying that, uh, I want as much feedback as possible, but do look when I posted the video, because if you're watching this like six months later, it's too late, or maybe a month later, within a month that would be great, I take all the feedback I can get. but. After a month, it kind of probably already done the mission we are uh, researching for. So yeah, we are going to send like maybe the two first pieces of a station to Duna with the rover, 
and uh, the next time we send uh, the start of the colony and in the meantime we research uh, a way to send the Kerbals through this uh, six month uh, journey or whatever how many months it is with artificial gravity now it won't work as we time warp but we can we can imagine and get ourselves into uh, try to make this as real as possible but that's the fun of Kerbal trying to make everything real so I think we have a lot of fuel in orbit now and we have the Keythane um, Keythane base on the moon which we're landing at now working hard to get uh, or to produce more fuel and we just have to find an efficient way to bring it back to the moon now I was originally thinking of a uh, fuel train but since we have deadly re-entry, I think the whole train will just explode on uh, re-entry and then I have to do a fuel train that doesn't do an air braking maneuver and I think that takes a lot of fuel. So we're testing this, seeing how much fuel we have left, sending it back uh, and uh, docking up and see how much fuel we actually get from the moon and back and how much fuel we need to go to the moon again. So. This is just a test, this is the first R&D test of our fuel truck. So we're now orbiting around the moon and you can see I have a mechanical jab on the side just for the orbital information because I like doing uh, most of it outside the map view now. Getting everything aligned I have to do with uh, map view because I can't see that with mechanical jab but mechanical jab is there, just there now <coughs> for um, for uh, giving me information about velocity and everything because there's a lot more details there. Um, so yeah, I had a little mishap on uh, this vessel because I forgot uh, fuel lines, so we have to hurry on our landing to transfer fuel, but it just goes okay. But yeah, I'm trying here now to get the uh, position straight over, getting the maneuver nodes straight over the base, seeing like where is the best places to burn to get this right. And it, it goes pretty smoothly, it's just a normal landing on the moon. <clears throat> just the vessel is a lot heavier because it's carrying these extra two fuel tanks on the side. Which, uh, for stupid reasons, are have quite a lot of fuel in them still because I forgot to empty a lot of this fuel uh, at the refueling station before I flew to the moon. I didn't realize bef before I was editing that this, this was just a stupid idea that I haven't hadn't um, done the refueling part of the refueling mission. So I guess uh, this attempt isn't completely valid because I use a lot more fuel getting to the moon and landing than I would uh, normally do since I'm carrying all this extra fuel. So next time we'll just try with uh, what my intended is one fuel tank to getting to the moon and using the same fuel tank getting uh, back just after we fill and uh, that is kind of just like one tank back and forth and I hope that will work uh, but um, we'll see we'll have to see um, but so yeah this test it, it's not completely valid on the way to the moon but it will be a valid test getting back and also see if we can do an aero break with this thing, I don't think so. Uh, how much fuel do we need to burn to stop around Kerbin? And all, all of that stuff is uh, interesting to find out. So that will be uh, the next episode, we'll be sending this back. And I think we're also going to start to develop uh, maybe the rover or maybe some of the interplanetary so maybe the interplanetary pusher because we need a standardized push pusher we can just put in orbit we can send it to Duna and we can maybe have two of them and they can go shuttle between Duna and Kerbin if we have the fuel capabilities of doing that so yeah I think I think this will be really interesting I hope you guys like it uh, please give me comments on it it will uh, I have a lot of ideas but I'm working very very hard on uh, schoolwork, so I'm having trouble being consistent on when I have the, uh, extra energy, energy to make episodes. But I do love making episodes, it's not that, but it's just having the extra energy after sitting a lot of lot of hours with schoolwork. Now, 
estimated 100% school week for me with my studies should be like a 45 hour week which it's it's okay but I'm not doing 150% school this uh, these five months so meaning I I should do like 60 hours of school work and plus plus and then I have normal work chores having to go back and forth between school and all in normal everyday things and when I come home at night and want to make an episode I'm just so exhausted so I'll try to make one every week I hope I can do that that will be fun and uh, now that I'm going we are going to do a lot of the R&D work as an episode I think that will also make it a little bit easier to keep them coming because that means all the time when I'm doing the R&D I'm actually recording it and making an episode on uh, also I'm going to start to, to or continue to Twitter about the progress and maybe put up some sketches about uh, how the the next vessel for the next episode looks and people can give me feedback on Twitter on what I should improve they'll just be easy sketches like this is the general idea of how I think and in my head how it should work and it might be just completely off and you guys can shout at me and say that no 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 it's not like that it works at all so I think um, it would be great to get feedback over Twitter and uh, wh- whatever forums you can find. Um, that would be great because this this uh, next part will have a lot of... I, I want to involve you guys. You guys are what makes this all interesting and fun and answering your comments and everything. So I want this to be more uh, involved. Well, well, have you more involved in how the episodes go and find out uh, and design for our missions. Now this landing uh, at the moon was pretty slow because I uh, had to get the exactly right position. Uh, I had to get close to the uh, key thing base. Now I didn't realize how close I would have to go. So the first landing is pretty okay. It's like 60 meters away from the key thing base. Um, it's really heavy because these two side tanks, tanks are almost full of fuel. So that they should be empty. They shouldn't have had any fuel in them. So that was a mistake on my part, but you learn. That's what, what this is all about. So yeah, coming in here very, very clo- uh, slowly and just making sure this whole thing is sliding uh, all the time sideways. And um, looking at it now, I probably should have sped it up because this is taking a little too long. But yeah. Uh, so this thing, uh, or the fuel um, refueling truck, is equipped with uh, a Kerbal attachment system. So it has the winch, winch and uh, and uh, docking or connector ports. And we also have the connector ports on the key thing base. So the idea is to get a Kerbal out. It will go over to the fuel truck and get the cable and connect it to the key thing base. And we can transfer fuel. Mm, sorry. Um, so the ketane base has been working hard, and it's already filled one orange tank. And I made it possible to keep extending this and making it bigger. But I think on the moon here we don't need any more than one orange fuel tank. But I'm thinking of sending the same design to Duna because it's really flexible, and I like it. So. So I think that maybe on Duna we can have more of the orange fuel tanks because on Duna we might just have a big fuel lander that can like take a whole orange fuel tank at once, fly it up into orbit, refuel and fly down again, pick up more fuel and go back so we don't have to wait for the key thing base so much. But that's the first uh, little bouncy landing but uh, it didn't break anything and it went okay. So you see the tanks are pretty full, which is pretty stupid since we're here for picking up fuel. But we speed this up because this took like 6 minutes and it's not that interesting to watch in normal speed. But quite fun to see, uh, I think it's Bob Kerman flying around at 4 times speed. Excellent. And yeah, there the cable. The cable is too short. It's only 50 meters long and I'm missing like 5 meters. So yeah, that was kind of stupid. I did not know that the cable had... A length restriction I should have guessed it I guess but I hadn't thought about it so we have to retract the cable and fly closer 
and uh, flying over there I did not use mechanical jab even though it would make this easier but I felt I've been using mechanical jab so much lately that for now I'm just I'm I just practice this almost practicing a little bit of my flying skills too but this time it worked so getting uh, back in and starting to transfer fuel and that's pretty much it for this episode please leave me a comment uh, in the bottom of uh, if you have any idea for an interplanetary pusher uh, start of a base or a rover or what we should do uh, with the R&D where we should start uh, Please give me a call if or what do you think of the idea and I see you guys next time.